Good afternoon, I'm Keaton Hall. Members of the House of Representatives are poised to vote on a bill that would protect same-sex and interracial marriage. And at least 17 Democratic members of the House were arrested during abortions right protests in front of the Supreme Court. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. As abortion rights advocates and Democratic lawmakers continue to protest the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, the House is voting on a bill to protect marriage equality out of fear the conservative high court could revisit other landmark decisions. It simply says each state will recognize the other state's marriages when and not deny a person the right to marry based on race gender, sexual orientation. Supporters of the Respect for Marriage Act note Justice Clarence Thomas's separate opinion suggested the court should reconsider past precedent, including same-sex marriage and access to contraception. But Republicans say the majority opinion did not go that far. This bill is simply the latest installment of the Democrats' campaign to delegitimize an attempt to intimidate the United States Supreme Court. Nearly one month since the Supreme Court's decision on abortion, patients and providers say they're navigating new restrictions and experiencing confusion depending on where they live. Physicians seeing ectopic pregnancies or patients with sepsis or hemorrhage during pregnancy are literally calling hospital attorneys who, in some cases, tell them to wait until there is a higher chance of death before intervening. During a House committee hearing Tuesday, lawmakers also heard from an OBGYN who opposes abortion. That that instead of defaulting to abortion as a band-aid for a variety of complex issues, we will now be working to identify innovative solutions for women today, their preborn children, and for future generations. And while there's been bipartisan support expressed for family planning, House Democrats say they will put Republicans on the record later this week with a vote on guaranteeing access to contraceptive services. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Two Democratic senators introduced a bill to expand access to family planning services and birth control. The House will vote this week to codify a decades-old Supreme Court ruling relating to contraception. The 1965 Griswold versus Connecticut decision protected the right of married couples to buy and use contraceptives without government restriction. It's a decision that conservative Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has suggested the current court might revisit. The House vote, which is unlikely to pass the Senate, is one of a number of so-called messaging votes being conducted in the wake of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade last month. Last week, the House also passed a series of abortion rights bills. The Supreme Court has agreed to move quickly on deciding whether teens in Indiana can get abortions privately. At issue is a state law that requires patients, parents to be notified if a patient under 18 seeks an abortion. Lower courts have invalidated that law, citing Supreme Court precedent, but the state asked the justices to review the matter last year. They put that petition on hold while they considered other cases like Roe v. Wade. Now that the half-century-old decision has been overturned, the state asked the court to move quickly on a decision. Chief Justice John Roberts granted Indiana's request to bypass normal procedures and expedite a hearing. The building that housed the abortion clinic at the center of the case that overturned Roe v. Wade has closed its doors for good. The distinctive building known as the Pink House which housed Mississippi's only abortion clinic, is under contract to be sold. Owner Diane Dertzis confirmed the news Monday night. Dertzis has vowed, had vowed to stay open as long as possible after the Supreme Court ruling in Dobbs versus Jackson's women, Jackson Women's Health. In that case, the conservative majority threw out the landmark 1973 Roe versus Wade decision that guaranteed the right to an abortion. Despite Dertz's best efforts, Mississippi's trigger law was immediately certified by the state's attorney general and forced them to shut down 10 days later. Dertz's said she and some of her staffers in Jackson hoped to, hoped to open a new clinic in Las Cruces, New Mexico by the middle of next week. Just a few scattered clouds out there this afternoon, but in some cases, those scattered clouds are bubbling up into a few stray downpours out there that could cool you off, well, at least temporarily. Outside right now, you see our camera from UVA Wise, middle 70s out there, by the way, right now, and you see some of those are building up a little bit. We've got showers not too far away from Wise right now. Speaking of that, downtown Whitesburg, where we have showers just to the east right now, all is sunny and quiet downtown. They sit in the mid-80s, but those dew points in the mid-60s, 
mean it feels more like the upper 80s, especially with calm winds. Low to mid 80s outside right now for the vast majority of us. The warm spot, 88 right now in Monticello. You see, for the majority of us, we're dry, but as you head down toward the Kentucky Tennessee line and the Kentucky Virginia line, we're dealing with just a couple of those stray showers near Williamsburg and again out toward Norton Wise and Clintwood out into southwest Virginia. Still watching everything scooting off to the south and east as we head through the remainder of the evening, so I don't think this is something that'll stick around for a while. But I'll have the very latest on when more showers and storms could return to the forecast as we head into the next little bit. Keaton. Thank you, Evan. Opening statements in former Trump advisor Steve Bannon's contempt of Congress trial kick off today. Earlier, the judge denied Bannon's request for a one month delay after defense attorneys and prosecutors argued over what evidence could be introduced at trial. Meanwhile, the House January 6 committee is preparing to move forward with the next public hearing without its chairman. Skylar Henry has more from Capitol Hill. <laughs> Former Trump campaign head and strategist Steve Bannon chuckled as he entered a D.C. federal courthouse for day two of his contempt of Congress trial. You feeling good today? I'm feeling great. Bannon was indicted after refusing to cooperate with a subpoena from the House January 6th committee. Both sides finalized a jury of 12 people and two alternates before opening statements started Tuesday afternoon. But attorneys spent the first half of the day arguing over whether letters sent between the committee and Bannon are admissible as evidence. Members of the House January 6th committee say they still haven't reached a decision on whether to subpoena former Vice President Mike Pence as they continue to collect evidence and prepare for more public hearings. Committee investigators had expected the U.S. Secret Service to possibly hand over alleged deleted text messages sent around the same time of the riot. But CBS News has learned the agency has turned over no new communications. The National Archives has now called on them to look into the missing text messages and to submit a report in 30 days. Another committee hearing Thursday will focus on the former president's actions as rioters violently stormed the Capitol. What we will lay out on Thursday is what was happening during those 187 minutes in the White House. At any point, he could have walked to the press room a couple feet away and called off the rioters. CBS News has learned former Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Matthews and former National Security Council member Matthew Pottinger will testify Thursday about what the former president was doing while the Capitol was under attack. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The committee chairman, Benny Thompson, is not expected to attend Thursday's primetime hearing in person because he has tested positive for COVID-19. The National Archives is joining a growing list of federal agencies and officials demanding answers about a batch of missing U.S. Secret Service text messages. The messages are from the day before and the day of the January 6, 2021 U.S. Capitol breach. The chief of records officer for the U.S. government sent a letter to the Department of Homeland Security records officer today. It asks the agency to clear up whether the text messages were deleted and if so, explain why. The possible text deletions were first brought to light last week by the Homeland Security Inspector General. He sent the chairs of the House and Senate Homeland Security Committees a letter informing them the text may be missing. Members of the select committee investigating the January 6th breach believe it's possible the text messages could still be recovered. They're planning to get some of them as early as Tuesday. The White House is set to take executive action on climate. Comes after Democratic Senator Joe Manchin torpedoed his party's efforts on sweeping legislation last week. An executive action would answer urgent calls from many progressives for Biden to act in the wake of that legislative setback. A White House official says right now all options are on the table, including declaring a national emergency on climate. But no decision has been made on that yet. The National Emergency Declaration would give the Biden administration broader latitude to take action and use government resources to tackle climate related issues. That includes funding mitigation efforts and strengthening regulations. Coming up on First at Four, Amazon announced it's suing more than 10,000 Facebook groups with allegedly brokered fake online reviews on Amazon's marketplace. Bus well, mostly quiet out there right now, but showers and storms do look to return as soon as tomorrow night. Details on that on the way. 